Welcome back to Close to Broke. My name is Kieran, and today, as you guys can see, we are at the LACMA light show installation thing, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's very important that you guys know today's episode is an absolute banger. VPIP nearly 40%. We get in the mix. The game is shorthanded for the entire time, which means a lot of fireworks, a lot of crazier poker being played. And we have a ton of hands to go over. It's a really fun session. I'm super excited to share with you guys. And I promise you guys, this is a really, really fun game to play. If you guys ever want to play in the game that I'm on the stream on, all you have to do is click the link in the description. It's an Instagram, Live City Poker. Um, yeah, I don't vouch for many things, but if you guys are interested in ever playing on this stream, I have a great time and they play smaller stakes. They're not paying me to say this, I just think it's really important to mention that they're running 2, 3, and 5, 5 on stream. So, I don't know, I think it's pretty cool, it's in West Hollywood. Otherwise, have a lovely day. Make sure you let them know that Close to Broke sent you. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go play some poker. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Live City Poker LA on a Monday night. It's a very special stream. We got a special guest close to broke in the house. I'm Dennis. This is Eli. What up, gang? And we are going to call the action for you tonight. Really looking forward to a good game. We're playing a, a 1500. No, I'm sorry, a 1,000 to $2,500 buy-in. We're going to start playing 510. I think it's going to go to 5 510. Mm, I, I believe. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Hope you enjoy. Hang out with us for the night, and Should away we go. Monday. Thank you guys again for stopping by. I can promise you guys, you won't want to click away. Today's a really fun session. We play a shorthanded game of 5, 10, 25. I'm super excited. Let's get ready to hop into the very first hand of the session. Early on, and for the entirety of the session, we will be playing five-handed. So, in this first hand, I open 10-7 offsuit from the cutoff for $30. The button and the small blind both make the call. And the flop comes fairly, fairly decent as it comes 10-8-5 with two clubs and a diamond. Obviously, there's a flush draw out there as well as a combination of different straights out there. So when the action's checked to me, I just had a bet here for a third of the size. Seems like the perfect size to bet. $35 to go. Only the small blind makes a call. We're going off to a turn card that comes at three of diamonds. All right, this is a pretty good card in a lot of ways. My hand should still be good. And moreover, none of the straight draws really come in and none of the flush draws come in, although this does bring a backdoor flush draw. At this juncture, the opponent decides to check it over to me once again. And I'm looking to go about two thirds the size of the pot. It's about time that we start really charging and ramping up the aggression. There's obviously a bunch of hands that I'd have here for bluffs in my range, and if I would be bluffing here, I'd like to go a little bit larger to de-incentivize my opponents to continue with whatever holding they have. I can still have all the overpairs here, as well as the combinations of sets that exist. Either way, it's also nice when you have just top pair. Either way, 110 is a new price to go. Our opponent ends up folding ace-jack offsuit. Feels like everybody played the hand well, and just like that, we're going into the next hand of the session. Moving right along here, another gun makes it $30 to go. It folds over to me in the big blind, and I decide to call here with Jack-8 offsuit. This is a great hand to defend from the big blind. Sure, we're playing five-handed, but uh, nonetheless, this hand shouldn't be correlating too much with the under the gun opening range. Either way, we're going off to a pretty decent flop that comes King-8-4 rainbow. With the action checked over to our opponent, he decides to do something a little interesting as he decides to throw out a little bit of a down bet. Going to $25 looks like he's attempting to go a one-third of the size of the pot, allowing himself to do this for cheap when he has a bluff, and obviously when he has value, he can do it for, you know, a decent price as well, and allowing me to continue fairly wide. I end up making the call, and we are instantly rewarded with an eight of spades on the turn. Super rainbow board here, the action goes check. Check, check. We're going off to a river that maybe at first sight's a little scary as a king of spades, but in reality, my opponent is probably never checking back a king here. And when that's the case, I decide to bet here on the larger side. I want to go around the size of the pot to balance myself whenever I do have a random bluff. There's not a lot of them. I can't pretend like there is. Maybe some kind of random 6-7 of hearts, 6-7 of clubs, 6-7 of spades. But beyond that, not a whole lot of random bluffs here. Maybe I, I could have ace high and try to get my opponent off a chop, but... I end up making it $100, and the graphics are incorrect here. The pot is not 135 or whatever it said. It is actually 110. So I'm pretty much betting the size of the pot. As you guys can see, and 
I can't in person. I'm looking to target ace highs and I guess middling pairs. My opponent is deep into the tank before eventually deciding on making the call here with pocket nines. I show him the bad news and unfortunately he is not going to win that pot. Just like that, you know, we're two for two, batting pretty well here, hoping to build on a really solid early session. There's so many different facets of the game that I think people don't study or learn about or just play enough shorthanded poker. So, Although it's not awesome, we had a lot of people flake late in the game, as maybe this was too big for them, or whatever, maybe they were just busy. But playing shorthanded is a really beautiful thing, almost poetic. There's so much to learn, so much we don't understand, and that's what makes this form of the game exciting. Either way, in this next hand, cutoff makes it $35 to go. Vince, who's been definitely the goat of the game, he's been giving the action, making a bunch of really fun plays, playing really unorthodox, decides to 3-bet from the small blind, to a hundred dollars. I find myself in the big blind looking down at ace 10 offsuit. I think at first sight a lot of people would think oh just pitch it in the muck um, or maybe they don't think that way because we can see everybody's hands and somehow I do have the best hand but this hand plays perfectly as a bluff four bet specifically in a smaller configuration of game. Oddly enough like you can see I do have the best hand but just in case my opponents have like ace jack or ace 10 maybe as well ace queen possibly I can make a big play in position against a three better. I end up finding the four bet here, the old four ball to $305. Luckily for us, both opponents end up making the fold. And just like that, we've batted three for three, batting a thousand at this point and doing a fairly good job of really taking advantage of the shorthanded play and bringing our A game to today's stream game. Alrighty, moving right along, we're hopping in directly into this action. So let's get you in. Cutoff is Vince, like we said, one of my favorite players to play with in a long time. Makes it $30 to go. I find myself on the button with King Jack Offsuit. We've been drilling this a lot. This is obviously going to be a 3-bet at some frequency. And in this game against this opponent, makes sense. I 3-bet to $100. Our opponent pretty quickly makes a call. And we're going off to a flop that comes Queen Jack 8 with two spades and a club. All right, we do have ourselves a king of spades here, so we're not too worried about that. But we are, you know, indeed worried about maybe somebody having the ace of spades here. Maybe Vince has some kind of random flush draw. Maybe he has some kind of random pair in a straight draw. Well, I'm going to be betting to find out where I'm at. I decided to down bet here to $70, which is about one third, and he makes a call. At this point, I'm pretty confident, like I said, that I do have the best hand. Sure, our opponent can have a queen at some frequency, but, you know, let's kind of say la vie let's live you know kind of dangerously with the action checked over to me once again on the turn at this point i am once again very confident that i have the best hand this does introduce a backdoor flush draw so there's two flush draws out there a bunch of straight draws a bunch of random crap junk that can be out there to be had so i decide to bet here once again for one third 140 dollars for value yes it's thin value and maybe some people won't like it i don't know you guys can see the cards as i can now but at this point, like I said, I'm looking to target random pair plus frost draws, random pair plus straight draws. Our opponent does, in fact, end up making the call. And we're going off to a river card that comes with four of hearts. With the action checked over to me once again, again, I'm very confident that I have the best 10, but this is even a little too thin for me. I end up checking it back. Our opponent is not too willing to show. I show my hand. And it is, in fact, good. Shout out to Vince. He was in there battling. He did end up having Ace-8 of Diamonds. I do like his hand to continue with. Obviously, if he had like Ace-8 of Spades or whatever, random hand like that, it would have been better. But in this case, I end up getting a really nice double barrel through with some pretty decent little value. Thin, albeit, but not too bad. This next hand is an absolute doozy. Buckle up. Our friend Vince never lets us down. Absolute legend. And you guys will see after this hand. This following hand, I find myself against an under the gun raise of $30. I look down at King 10 of Diamonds. I think this plays really well in position as a three bit. Again, we're five handed. This seems pretty standard. I make it $105 to go. My opponent decides to make the call after a little bit of thinking. And we're going off to a flop. The flop comes Jack, Nine, Deuce with two spades and a club. At this point, the villain decides to check it over to me as I am the initial three better or the aggressor, the last known aggressor. I decide to see bet here for a down bet of $85. My entire range would be doing this. It's nice to do this with aces and kings that contain a spade. It's also nice to do this with some random combo draws or in this case, a gut shot straight draw. 
Either way, the villain ends up making the call, and we're going off to a turn card that comes the Eight of Clubs. At this point, I'm putting the opponent on some kind of random draw or pair. The interesting thing that ends up unfolding here is that on the Eight of Clubs, which I don't think changes a whole, whole lot, maybe it does bring in some straights, I end up being in a really precarious situation when my opponent leaves out for $200. Obviously, this does bring in some of the random straights like 10-7 or Queen-10, which, again, we can't totally discount. So, at this point, I think folding my hand would be a little too ridiculous as we do have an open ender. We do have an over, and Vince can definitely be doing this with a bunch of crazy holdings. I end up making the call here, looking to draw out, or maybe bluff on some kind of random river. Luckily for us, the river comes a decent one, as it does give us a straight, but does bring in the front door flush, as it comes a seven of spades. All right, this is now getting a little worrisome. There's nearly $800 in the pot. I don't know what my opponent can do. He can have any two random holdings in his hand. And uh, the worst thing is now is that Vince is not stopping the aggression. On this river, Vince decides to bet $575. I'm really worried as I think that my opponent can have a flush at some frequency. But the one thing that I'm, you know, obviously running into is that I just don't see him leading flushes on a turn card that brings in straight so if we can delete that what else does his range consist of maybe he has a random like 10 7 straight himself maybe he had a pair plus straight on the turn that ended up making a rate a straight on the river there's so many random hands that i think my opponent can have and i think that although it is unfortunate my hand as strong it as it is is only a bluff catcher and give all the credit in the world to our opponent vince Put us in a tough spot. Maybe it looks easy for you guys because you guys can see obviously he has pocket threes and it's just blasting off. But for me, I'm in a really tough spot. The only thing that Vince didn't know is that he's trying to bluff the biggest station in Southern California. Well, unfortunately for him, the gas stations are not close for business. I am here ready to call all hours of the day, 24 hours by seven days of the week. I end up making the call. Our opponent ends up showing the pocket threes, and luckily for us, we're able to take down that massive pot, $2,000 coming our way. We feel really good about that. I'm lucky that he was bluffing, and I ended up running into or backing into a decent hand. But yet again, I want to tip my cap to Vince. Outstanding bluff by him. Really love that play. If you guys have a quick second, do me a massive favor by clicking the like button down below. It'll take you guys like a grand total of a millisecond to do. But you guys have no idea how great that does us a service for the algorithm. Anyways, thank you guys so much. Let's throw it back over to me. Let's go over some more hands. Uh, looks like Kieran's going to make it 150 with ace queen off. Yeah, I think Vince bumped it up to 40 with the seven deuce and ran into ace queen here. What if he four bets? Pressing with Jack Deuce gets out of the way and it's back over to Vince. Four bet might work against ace queen off. Close. He makes the call. This is wild. He just calls. Love it. Yeah. Let's see what happens here. He's got two live cards. Ace queen five, two clubs and a heart. I think at this point, Vince has shown a propensity to blast off, so why not bet really small and maybe allow him to do something radical again? I bet $100 into $310, and as you guys can see, Vince is playing the old 7-deuce game by himself. He ends up showing the hand, and I end up showing him that I flopped the absolute world here. Unlucky for us, as I feel like if I just checked the hand, which I should have done after playing with Vince for a little while... Like I said, he's definitely shown the ability to bluff. Maybe not follow through all the way in the river every time, but at least throw out a little feeler bet. So considering we freaking destroy this flop, I think it's best that we just check him and allow him to take over the reins of the hand. But say la vie, we can only do so much now that we know what the hands are in post. Either way, moving right along. Like we said, I think I've won every single hand to this point. And a lot of things you guys aren't seeing is obviously we have played some hands and lost really small pots or won some hands that were a little smaller. We've been playing pretty solid to this point. Three bet, C betting, taking it down, playing our position, playing our cards fairly well, but nothing really to put on the vlog. If you guys are interested in watching the whole thing through though, and you guys want to see how I play, learn a little more about what it's like to play at Live City Poker. Like I said, there'll be a link to this exact VOD and the video somewhere. Check it out if you guys are interested. 
Either way, let's hop into this next hand. In this spot, I find myself under the gun with Ace-9 offsuit. This is a fine card, or cards, I should say, to raise. I make it $30 to go. Preston in the cutoff, who's a young player, uh, really good player, I want to say, actually. Just ran into kind of some tough spots a lot today. He ends up making the call, and the small blind makes a call as well. We're going off to a flop that comes King-7-6 Rainbow. With the action checked over to me, I've been C-bet just taking down a ton of these boards, and this is a reasonable board for my range i end up c betting for 50 dollars somewhere in the neighborhood of half pot both players end up making the call which is a little worrisome we're going off to a turn card that comes with three of clubs introduces a backdoor flush draw which is obviously not good for me as i don't have a club in my hand with the action checked over to me i decide to shut it down here unless the river brings some kind of random good card for my range luckily for us it ends up checking through and we're going off to a river card that comes a very nice 10 of diamonds why is that nice? It doesn't improve my hand. I have a 9, and I can very credibly have 8-9 in my holding here. With the action checked over to me, the only way I think I can get a better hand to fold, like if somebody has middling pair or top pair weak kicker, is by betting really big here. I make a little bit of an error. I actually thought there was only $200 in the middle, but maybe the graphics are incorrect either way, but I ended up making an over bet here of $250. Our opponent is deep into the tank on the button, and you guys can hear from the table audio a little bit of what's going through his head. Preston in a tough spot here. It's a big bet. Bet the, Kieran bet the pot. Preston with top pair, not such a great kicker. But he's made calls like this tonight. And done oh, yes. this time. Weighs As you guys down. could catch there a little bit, Preston is obviously in a world of pain. He's asking, do people really ever bluff the river multi-way? And the answer to that question is honestly not that often. Unfortunately for him, he ran into the one person that's capable of finding a bluff in this spot. And the one thing I will say that sucks about this spot for Preston is that he just has to call. And the reason being is that he holds a nine. And that's really important in this run out is I'm literally only representing eight, nine here. The river, I'm only representing eight, nine and maybe five. 5-4, but even then 5-4 bets the turn. And maybe sometimes I get creative with King 10, but even then betting pot is a little thin. Who knows? Either way, he ends up making the fold and Mamba ends up making the fold as well. I end up showing the nine for the game. And uh yeah, unfortunately for Bressy ends up folding the best hand. Really happy with the way I was able to snatch this hand. We've won a lot of the hands we've shown to this point, and we've kind of just been doing okay in the game. As you guys can see from our chip stack either way pretty happy with how we've played to this point and happy even when we don't make the best hand we're able to take it away from the best hand well not everything can be fine and dandy not everything is just a bunch of roses in this next hand there's a lot to go over so like i said really hang in there with me because this is a fun one i find myself in the big blind and there's a button straddle to 25 dollars i make it 80 dollars to go our opponent here from the cutoff chase a very solid young player decides to make the call here we're going off heads up to a flop that comes deuce three queen with two spades and a heart with the action starting off with me i decided to see bed for a third of the size of the pot to 60 dollars looking to charge all random flush draws all random straight draws and really put middling pairs to the test at this point my opponent does something i wasn't totally expecting which is raised to 150 dollars against this really small sizing I think this is a pretty easy just call. I have the ace of spades as a backup plan, which is nice, whether I bluff or back into the best hand. And moreover, ace high can be good here a ton of the times. Sure, I think my opponent can sometimes bet raise here with a flush draw, but the problem is I don't think he'd be going so small with the flush draw, but again, maybe in position he can. Either way, not a whole lot to know as I haven't played with a lot of these folks. Anyways, I end up making the float here, the call. We're going off to a turn card that comes with 10 of spades. A okay card i guess as we now pick up the nut flush draw but it does bring in the flood door flush with the action checked over to chase he decides to bet 275 dollars at this point i didn't call the flop to you know fold to a half size pot bet on the turn after i pick up a flush draw at this point i end up deciding to make the call here my opponent happens to have a random holding like a bluff he has a random queen. I think that he'd be shutting down on most rivers. So like I said, I end up making the call and the river card comes with three of hearts. 1.1K in the middle. My opponent has a little more than that left in the stack. I check it over to him once again. And at this point, after a bit of thinking, he decides to bet $700. 
All right, now bear with me as there's a lot that I want to go over in a short amount of time without boring the hell out of you guys. When my opponent finds three streets of bets here, he's even if his sizing isn't indicative of it, he's fairly polarized. I just don't see him betting three streets without specifically ace queen with the ace of spades or a flush. I just don't see a ton of hands that exist in his range that can go for three streets of value that aren't really, really, really nutted hands. Like second nut flush or the nut flush. Like I said, it's hard to have the nut flush when I have the dang ace of spades. I'm deep into the tank and I'm trying to think of hands that my opponent can bluff with. I think four or five makes sense. King Jack, Jack nine. There's a bunch of different holdings that I think exist. We've been really, really passive for the most part. So Granted, I don't think my opponent could end up to this river here too often with a king high or jack high, but it's not impossible. And I think my opponent's a good enough player to do these things. So after quite a bit of tanking, maybe a little bit of punting getting in me as I can't just happily win every single pot of the night. I have to make things hard for myself. I end up making the hero call. Like I said, maybe at face value, it seems ridiculous. Maybe even run it through a solver and it seems ridiculous, but I don't know. It feels like sometimes you got to make the big call here on the river. It's worked out for me in the past. It's bit me in the ass in the past. And in this case, I'm really not that disappointed in it. I think my opponent can definitely turn a hand like King Jack with the King of Spades into a bluff. I definitely think my opponent would have to continue bluffing with 4-5 or 5-6. Either way, it is what it is. I'm happy to give the action when it's due. Good on you, Chase. Ended up getting the max for me. Alrighty, looking to lick our wounds here as we're battling in this session although it's been fairly smooth sailing like i said we found a way to make it a little difficult if you guys have made it to this point of the video i'm gonna ask you guys to do me a massive favor by clicking the like button down below you guys have no idea how freaking strong and powerful that simple thing is by clicking the like button and subscribing and commenting we do a couple of things we get a little closer to 20k subs which were right on the cusp the precipice of getting towards that mean the world to me obviously liking and commenting the interaction in general is really good for the algorithm and even more so helps grow our little platform a little bit either way in this very next hand buckle up because vince once again is here to make life a little difficult for me or i guess in this case i don't want to i don't want to spoil it hop in this next hand as it's fun to go over Anyways, the button straddle is on. The small blind raises to $60. I find myself in the big blind with the ace-queen offsuit. Once again, going to be three betting shorthanded. This is super mandatory to do so. I'm making $180 to go. The action folds back to Vince, who decides to make the call. We're going off to a very, very good flop that comes queen, seven, three, all spades. Forgive the graphics because they are out of order. The, the cards are correct, but they're out of order. And you'll see in a second as eventually it'll catch up. The flop is, in fact, queen, seven, three, all spades. With the action checked over to me, I just have this board absolutely crushed. I need for my opponent to catch up in some aspects, so I end up checking it through. And we're going off to a beautiful turn card that comes with 10 of spades, giving me the absolute stone-cold nutter butters. With the action starting off with our opponent, he does exactly what we were hoping by leading off for $200. This is a pretty reasonable bet as it's somewhere above half the size of the pot, 60, 65%. With the action on me, raising would be absolutely disastrous. I'd allow my opponent to get, you know, rid of all of his bluffs, which would be ridiculous in every freaking facet of the word. So I end up just making the call, and we're going off to a river card that comes a five of clubs. Nice. We end up on this river with the nuts, have nothing to worry about. Although the board pairing is not something I was worried about, I doubt my opponent is betting a set on the turn. So with the action on him, he goes deep into the tank. At this point, I'm just praying that my opponent just blasts it all in there. But luckily for him, his intuition gets the better of him, and he decides to check it to me. At this point, I think it's pretty obvious that my opponent has either a bluff or or a kind of a weak spade and sure maybe by betting really small here i can get sometimes him to overreact or overcall with a really bad hand but i'd rather just kind of balance myself when i want to do crazy stuff although it's hard to be balanced i'm not gonna lie to you i don't even think i am in this sense i just end up going for all of it hopefully i can cooler him off if he has like king of spades here or jack of spades and just can't find the fold i go all in although the graphic says vince has like 1.3k i'm not mistaken i think he has somewhere in the neighborhood of 1k or 1.1k at most 
he ends up pretty quickly letting it go so our overbet does not work out there he ends up snuffing us out if that's the right word and uh like i said unfortunate for us there is we couldn't get any more money but pretty happy with the way everything turned out there it seemed like it turned out all right also it's hard to get more value from eight six of hearts on a four spade board we haven't found any really massive holdings throughout the session. We've just done a really good job of capitalizing on position, really penalizing opponents by finding three bets and four bets, and lastly, taking advantage of what has been a fairly passive table post-flop. We're getting off to this very last hand of the session that I kind of think wraps all of that together. As in this final hand of the session, the small blind decides to raise the $75, folds to me on the button, I do have the $25 straddle out, and I decide to make the call with 10-9 offsuit. The flop comes very beautiful once again. It's also easy to win at poker when you just keep hitting flops. 10 high. With the action checked over to me, I think at this point, I'm pretty comfortable just checking it through. It's nice to play my hand fairly deceptively and get maybe ace highs, random flush draws if they come on the turn or straight draws obviously that exist all those cards um you know will probably be paying me off on different streets and like i said maybe why not have them blast off to me if need be either way we're going off to a turn card that does in fact bring some stuff as it comes to five of hearts bring a backdoor flush and it does pair the bottom card. With the action checked over to me once again, I think at this point we have the green light to bet. We'd be really foolish not to try to bet here. I make it $55 to go, going one third. Our opponent pretty quickly decides to make the call, and we're going off to a river card that comes with three of diamonds. Nearly $270 here in the middle by this point. And once again, my opponent decides to check it over to me. I think by this point, it'd be really nice to get called by random ace highs, random middling pairs, as a course, if our opponent is checking all three streets and check calling the turn, he's got to have some form of showdown value. Either way, at this point, I decide to bet a little bit on the bigger side. I go around 75%, betting 200 into about 270. My opponent thinks about it for a moment before deciding to make the hero call with king high. As you guys can see, they're taking advantage of my position, and obviously it's easy to do so when you flop top pair and you hold. Today's been a really fun session. The group of guys that we played with today were an absolute blast it was a pleasure being on stream if you guys enjoy me you know coming through playing on streams whether it's the hustler the bike or here let me know and if you guys haven't already please make sure to click the subscribe button down below it goes a really really far way in helping our channel grow i can't thank you guys for consistently finding a way to make my day by clicking the like button by subscribing by commenting by showing the love and spreading it i thank you guys all so much Let's throw it over back to me once again at LACMA in front of the installation of Lice to see how we feel after today's session. All right, as you guys saw there, it was a really fun session. A lot of things panned out in our favor. A couple things didn't. The only real hand of note that we lost and played poorly, I guess, was the A6. But shorthanded, I don't really mind my call too much. I think that having the Ace of Spades is really important, but Either way, who cares? We ended up winning in the game. We were into the session for 2,500 exactly. We didn't need to top off. And we were out for 38.85. So pretty reasonable profit of almost 1,400 after how much we tipped. So we had a pretty solid win either way. A couple things I want to point out and mention to you guys is that I have a meetup game coming soon. It'll be in October and I will save the info for a couple videos from now, but save the date will be i'll say this much it'll be in the west coast of the world or in the united states and uh, i'm really excited and super super excited to give more information on that either way i hope you guys have a lovely day and uh, thank you guys so much for supporting these videos i'll see you guys hopefully in a couple of days as we get into the month of september or a little bit beyond that we'll be bringing back three videos a week uh, but until then i hope you guys have a lovely day stay happy stealthy more importantly guys we're good at the tables deuces